I've been thinking a lot about the Bare Naked Ladies lately, the band. I do like the Bare Naked Ladies a lot. How did they get as far as they got with that name? Because everybody knows that the name's a joke. I, mean, I don't understand the name. Is, is it a joke? Is it like a joke it that a I don't joke. get? Like it, I think well, it's none a, of them I think are women. None so. of them are women. Yeah. But they like bare naked ladies. Like they, Although, like they name their band after something they like. Well, I think they may named it. I, I think I remember reading an article like, like they named it as a joke. Like corn. <laughs> so people would come see them. Like corn or the yeah. chili peppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you saw, if you were eighteen to twenty-five and you saw a flyer that said "Come see the bare naked ladies," yeah, fuck yeah, uh, yeah. All right, I'll take a chance. And there's so, yeah. the early music videos, though. Like those guys are <laughs> such nerds. Exactly. Like, yeah, I love the bare naked ladies. Gordon era. I feel like if we um, if we don't make it as a uh, role playing game podcast, I think that we have a future as a music reviewer. Kind of I think that would be fantastic. Culture, pop culture. You think we should review music? Well, or just talk about bands? I think we've missed the boat by not turning this into a Taylor Swift podcast already. So, uh, right. I mean, yeah. I will tell you what. I've been Team Taylor for years. Ever since the, the controversy with uh, fucking the other one. Who's the other one? Katie something? Perry? Katy Perry. Katy Perry? Katy Perry, yeah. I've, I've always been Tay-Tay. Team what, I'm sorry, what? Tay Tay? I don't Team think that's Tay-Tay. used anywhere. No, is that just me? I think so. <laughs> that's what I've always been. I've always been. I said, you know, she's the one that's the best. You're a Swifty. She has the best music. I'm, I've been a Swifty okay, for a Swifty. long time. She just reached the billionaire status. Yeah, she did. Had billionaire status. Saving movie theaters. She's. Yeah. Fuck. That's the second natural 20 in a row. Yeah, like when I you're when you're a pop Taylor. artist, I haven't seen the eras movie. <clears throat> when you're a pop artist and you're selling out live concerts on film at theaters, you've made it. You've done it. Yeah, she's amazing. I she's about the music review podcast, Brad. My musical knowledge ends at about 2019. Oh, it's better. I haven't than mine, listened. Trust to, me. <laughs> I haven't listened to any modern music because I think it's all trash. Well, 98 percent of it. I've been trying to listen to 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 new stuff, but uh, Third Eye Blind is still on the playlist, though, for me. <laughs> I mean, like I, you know, like Semi Charm kind of life comes on, and I'm just oh, like, yeah. yeah, here it is. Baby, That's my baby. Game. Oh, nothing like a song about doing math. <laughs> I know, I know. They bleep a bunch so of that catchy. from the radio these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder hmm. why. Uh, what other jams by Third Eye Blind are out there? Gosh, the, even the, those first three albums were really good. But see, my I was talking to my wife about this the other day. I, I feel sad that Third Eye Blind did not achieve sort of like um, elder statesman of rock status. Because mm. they, they kind of, as because Stephen Jenkins is kind of, you know, apparently kind of a jerk. He couldn't work with people long enough. And so he kept losing band members. And I just feel, I just feel like we lost something as a culture. I don't. I don't feel that way because Third Eye Blind couldn't stick together. Because yeah, yeah. here was an ass. It's kind of like if uh, Wild Stallions didn't save the world, you know, like right. they fell apart. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the Bill and Ted reference that we needed. <laughs> Dad, Wild Stallions. What a yeah, I do. I spend a lot of time thinking about Third Eye Blind. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't have. I don't have any rebuttal for that. I'm glad so, that you had the courage to admit that, Mike. If you had a scale and you had the time you spend thinking about Taylor Swift and then Third Eye Blind on the other side, like which <laughs> which is going to win? Hmm. Well, probably Third Eye Blind. Wow. Okay, good. <laughs> wow. So because I've known them longer. I mean, I was listening to Third Eye Blind in high school. I remember walking around with my disc man with blue in there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to jog I'll it, so it I can skip. I can just see a young a, a young Michael wandering the halls of high school with his disc man on, listening to Third Alone. Eye Blind. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> wishing he could live a semi charmed kind of life. <laughs> yeah, I was I like that. Stephen Jenkins, he understands my life. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't have a lot of uh, adversity in high school. Honestly, I really, I just kind of showed up and then went home. Kind of like work today. Just show up and come home. We could keep doing this and just not get stressed out about lycanthropy and snowmen. We could just talk about I know. music in our childhood. I know. You guys would, we, listeners wouldn't mind that. They'd be like, you know what? We haven't had an episode where you guys have talked about they actually might milk toast it. childhood. Starfinder second edition, by the way, has been, is, is coming out. I, I've read the soldier and mystic class test documents now. I think they're really good. I don't know. I'm stoked. So yeah, we'll uh, 
should we do a second show? Do you think we can possibly produce two of these a week? I don't think so. <laughs> I would play it. I don't know if I would edit it. Yeah, I think it would just. Yeah. Like, I mean, I would edit it, it. if we it. if if we had, if we had a day to play it, I would edit it. Oh, Bill, mm-hmm. everyone, it's, it's 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 on. It's recorded. Bill has offered <laughs> to edit the Starfinder. I mean, podcast. I won't be editing any of this podcast anymore. But <laughs> right, <laughs> I'll edit the Starfinder yeah. one. Well, let's just let that percolate for we'll a couple of weeks. We'll let, that, we'll let that simmer for now. Let's just let that simmer. Maybe we just made a decision. Oh, my God. Kingmaker. All right, fellas, my friends, my best friends in the world, aside from my wife and my son. Um, we're in kind of a pickle. We've had a hard expedition. Let's talk about the entirety of this expedition, mm-hmm. by the way, because you guys have really been away from Fort Trand for, I would say, almost a month at yeah, this point. Month, so yeah. you started yeah, out. Yeah, you went to go see Boken uh, because you heard, well, because you learned that Boken knew Mitchell's parents and knew a generation ago. And you wanted some more information about that and about Wolfsbane. And Boken was not very helpful. Uh, you then stopped by Oleg's and you met with Keston Garris and Oleg again. And they sent you guys south uh, down to the uh, Lizard City or whatever you want to call it, the Isle of the Lizard King. You go there while exploring the forest along the way, and you diffuse a situation there. You fight a wisp, and then you head east to Candlemere Island, where you explore that dungeon down there. We spent, what, like 17 episodes down in the bowels of Candlemere Island. Yeah. And, of course, unfortunately, during the fight with the ancient statue, we lose... Kritala, the tosser. Have you seen there's a hashtag on our, our Discord server that says the tosser must live? Hashtag. Yep. <laughs> Oy, they're, in sorry, shock, everybody. they're in for a shock. Yeah. Spoilers. Save the tosser. It's up. Yeah. Save save the tossers on one of the water on, tower. On one of the water towers. <laughs> <laughs> I was as surprised as anyone. They're handing I was driving through the underpass and the underpass is spray painted across the top. Yeah. yeah. Save the tosser. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, the tosser could not be saved. Could not. Um, and so, Donnie, are you still doing okay? I like this new uh, character that you yeah. came up with. Yeah, no. I'm I mean, excited. Yeah, I, it's sad for Katala, but I'm excited for Og. So, yeah. Og. A little bittersweet. Yeah, yeah. Og is good. And we're still He's carting. Katala is still with us. Like, we're yeah. still yeah, carting have his. his yeah. And it's, it's cold, so he's very frozen. Yes. <laughs> yes, he's he's very frozen. Is he over like the back of one of the horses or something? Maybe I, I think know we, we, have, like, we fashioned a like a yeah. yeah litter. That's right. That's right. You've got like a, a stretcher type thing that's being dragged along. And then, of course, as you're leaving Candlemere Island, you meet Og, this gnome who uh, has visions and uh, sees things, and has someone from the first world telling him you need to acquire the dagger thirst which you guys found on candlemere island that's why he came to candlemere island he came there for thirst you already had thirst and you gave him thirst after he helped lead you off the island at this point you're rapidly making back for fort trand through a blizzard in order to beat Sirio's lycanthropy uh, because if the full moon rises which it's bound to do tomorrow night uh then a Sirio is in big trouble so you have one day of travel to make one more hex back to Fort Trand in the midst of a blizzard. You came across a small hut in the wilderness, one hex southwest of Fort Trand. And uh, that hut, I believe there was a little bit of a fire burning within and hearth, some smoke coming out of a chimney, a fenced in yard in the front. And in that fenced in yard are two uh, snowmen construct situations rolling around on their snowman balls that are getting bigger and bigger you guys hey, approach i've uh i've i've, I've, I've rolled over on my angle. i've rolled over my balls before and uh i feel bad <laughs> have you rolled over your balls <laughs> you definitely got bigger. yeah one, we've all one done aside that. mike that uh, i don't think we covered in the flavor <laughs> one, text uh what one ball aside or what one, no what does the sorry. smoke smell like that's coming Ooh. out of the <laughs> yeah this this was raised before but uh, we didn't get an answer yeah oh uh roll a roll a perception <laughs> check while well, I think of an answer. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, say a number then. <laughs> oh, so I rolled a uh, 20, 24. Hey, it's mm. good. That's a pretty good. 
you know when you know the carrots you know carrots uh, and you the, know the how vegetable, you or them? is there a person named carrots? Because I don't know a person named carrots. <laughs> you don't know, you know the vegetable, and you know how like you can, you can cut carrots on on the dais, kind of a, you know, mm-hmm. like, like a, a julienne, like a slanted julienne. cut, and then you rotate the carrot, you cut it again, and so the carrots have a really cool shape before they go in the stew. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what it smells like. It smells like really cool carrots. Yeah, it smells like a delicious beef stew with oh. carrots cut in a way to make them more flavorful than normal. And for those of you that well, can't see our video feed right now, Mike was cool. making a cutting motion, pulling the knife towards his hand, which yeah. was giving me <laughs> great anxiety. <laughs> Look, we all know I can't function <laughs> without society all around me. To, you know, I need I need other people to help me. Okay, well, just to recap too, we are fatigued. Because we you were, 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 yes, yeah, we're, you have been forced marching for mm-hmm. days at this point through this blizzard. I cannot imagine the exhaustion level of the party mentally um, and physically. Yeah, I am colder now, having thought about that than I was before. In any event, you approach this house uh, rather than trying to just walk in and 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 interact with these constructs. You know, Brad via Mitch uh, goes, "Hey!" calls from you know over the over a hill, a few hundred feet away. And I believe we ended last episode with a uh, an old woman with green skin opening the door. And let me describe the door a little bit more. It's one of those double. It's one of those two piece doors where she can just open the top half. You know what's Dutch that door. called? Dutch door. A Dutch door. Yeah. Um, it, it's like a Dutch door. She opens the the top half, and she's like, Bleh. you know, she, who who goes there? She says. And that was the end of the episode, but that's where we find ourselves now. You guys are standing in a group, you know, probably on your horses, about 100 feet away. The snowmen are rolling around, and they've stopped, and they're looking at you guys, and they're looking at this old woman, and the old woman uh, is has just asked you, Who goes what there? there? What do you do? What time of night? Or day? Is it night? Is It, what it is early in the evening. Okay. So the sun is starting to go down. You have tonight... And then tomorrow morning, and then the night after that is the full moon. So twenty four so, hours from now, we have issues. Approximately. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is there? Is it still a blizzard? Like, because yes, the visibility it, was real it, low. It has lightened a little bit, but travel is extremely hard. You, you, it's possible you could make Fort Trand in a day if you just wanted to, to leave, but you might not. It, it's, Forced it march might, fatigue. Might if anything check. happened. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are exhausted, you're tired, you can maybe make Fort Trans, you're not sure, and you've found this hut. Is there pizza in there? <laughs> Is that a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> no one out pizzas the hut. I got a pizza from hut. <laughs> pizza from pizza hut <laughs> lately. It's not good. Oh, what are you I talking know. about, man? Oh, they're horrible. No, it was not very good. I got one a few months ago. Did they forgot the sauce? Forgot the sauce. Mm-hmm. What? I know. I got the and and I don't know. About I you sent guys them a text because you can like text the the the, the place. No. Yeah. They did not care. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered. And why I ordered would Papa they? John's the other night, just because I was sick and didn't feel like cooking anything, and I was like, I'm just gonna get a pot because they have the uh, shakaroni. I think it is the shack pizza. And I was like, the, that's oh, <laughs> Shaq's pizza. Yeah, I was like, I'm just gonna get that. I literally took two bites out of the first slice and fed the entire pizza to my dog. <laughs> like no thanks. <laughs> well, my like, wife and I got food horrible. poisoning from Papa John's a few years ago. We sworn it off. So we're not well, going to get sponsored by Papa John's, just so you guys. Yeah, know. I guess that sponsor <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. So well, this is not a Pizza Hut that you're looking at, okay. though. This is a hut in the middle of a blizzard. It's a hut that smells like old, carrots. Uh, it's a yeah, carrot with hut. a hut. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, carrot hut. Here, I got a little picture. Oh, I like pictures. You want to see? Oh, look at that. Oh wow. That looks like fun. She does have green skin and talons. Green skin and talons. So a stick. I, how far away am, is Mitch from the uh, the door? Uh, Ninety five feet. Okay, so I can get there and couldn't. No, I wouldn't be able to attack in, her. And you're in greater difficult <laughs> terrain. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I think difficult. it is the snow is up above your knees. And Og, I don't know even what Og is doing. Yeah, Og is. So just she's. Deep. Yeah, I can't. He's, yeah, he can't really see anything. Dry is going to slip off his horse on the other side, not facing the door, so he's kind of behind the horse. Hmm. And he's going to draw his bow and just stand there. Are you hmm. knocking an arrow or just your bow? Just just got my bow just on my your bow. just okay. in case. Yeah, I think Mitch's the posture is kind of the same, like has the sword kind of down by his side um, and kind of one hand up, like trying to wave and seem as friendly as possible. 
you know, not hiding. Okay. Um, we could use some shelter. So you, you ask for shelter? Well, yeah. Can, can, can we approach? Who are you? Who goes there? Identify yourselves. We're emissaries from Fort Trand. You've, you've probably heard of us by now. Um, we were uh, trying to make establish uh, good relations with the lizard folk to the southwest of here, and we were overcome by this blizzard. We're on our way back to our settlement. We would appreciate some shelter. Make an impression, please. Diplomacy check. I'm very impressive. You got that cloak that helps you too for that, right? Yeah, I do. I think so. Uh, rolled a 15, so that's uh, 27. Yes. I'm impressed. Yeah. He's an impressive man. Recognition crosses her face. Imagine from her standpoint, she can't see you guys, right? She can't. She can't. She can't see who you are in these blizzard conditions, standing a hundred feet away. So she says, "Come closer. Do it slow, slow." And then she kind of encants for a moment, and you see that the snowmen constructs they cease rolling, and they roll over to stand side by side uh, around her. And she steps out of her hut and stands on her doorstep and closes the door behind her. And uh, you, you see her fully now. Uh, she's, you know, she appears to be probably human, possibly half orc. Uh, she's kind of a rotund frame. She's relatively short, but uh, otherwise, you know, she just looks like a, like, a, like a normal woman. She's just dressed in heavy, heavy clothing, um, leathers, furs. She's got this, like, triangular hood up above her head, and she's got this big... Uh, staff that she carries that looks like it's got an owl bear claw that's affixed to the head of the staff. So you think she could use this. That's a staff that's been modified to do like slashing or piercing damage, huh. you know. And that's what she has. I mean, I'm okay with walking closer so she can see us. I'm going to sheath my sword as well. If I jumped up the like, I slid off the backside of the horse and I'm standing behind it. So am I in concealment? Yeah, you would have cover. No, you wouldn't be concealed. All well, right. you okay? So let, let's talk about the game mechanics. Everybody has greater concealment right now with the blizzard, blizzard conditions. Okay. And in addition to that, some of you might have cover, which would increase your armor class. So we've got flat checks before rolling on armor class, and we've got increased armor class as well. Well, I think um, Mitch is going to kind of defer to Serio as far as if we approach, you know, and kind of if he's, if 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 Serio is going to approach, Mitch will take up a, a position right next to him. Yeah, so Zero uh, starts uh, trudging through the snow toward toward the hut, um, calmly and kind of like a like an an inviting manner. Try not to seem threatening. You get to her gate, it opens freely, and you proceed in. I think everybody's with you. It, uh, the only thing I need to understand is whether Dry Colme is hanging back behind with the horses. I am or not. back by the horses. I have not okay. stepped forward. So so Dry kind of takes a, a supervisory stance back there, but the rest of the party enters the gate and as you guys get closer um, additional recognition obviously falls upon her face and she looks at you all and she says you're more than just emissaries you're the rulers she's got the training come in, cards come in, she? come 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 in she says and she waves the 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 snowmen off and she's like come get warm come on and she she opens she opens up her door and in she walks or she she begins to walk in Somebody detect magic. I don't have that ability. <laughs> Mitch is going to make some complicated hand signals to kind of let Mitt uh, dry know that it's safe to... Complicated, universal but, but universal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Neil is helping you. She's like, <laughs> I got this. Neil is nose. Oh, by the way, let's talk about someone who's cold. Neela Trand is cold. Mm -hmm. She's like not okay Her right Her blood's now. slowing down. She's a lizard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got like a yeah. bit of a group with us. Yeah, like, Lindsay's we've got with us. Still Lindsay... Nila. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You've got yeah, you've got six. There's six of you guys traveling together. Six and a corpse. Um <laughs> Wow. We're gonna bring Bashkin and Thom out. Or, or not Bash. I said Bash. So many dead characters. <laughs> oh Bash, yeah, really, really. <laughs> uh so this woman opens the door to her hut. She walks in. It is warm and inviting in there. It looks nice. It looks like it what what a place. In the, to find in the middle of this horrible blizzard. That sounds pretty inviting. Uh, can I sense motive? Sure. Roll a perception check. Uh, Mitch is going to roll one as well here at the door. Yeah. Uh, 29. Mm. 
And Mitch, anything else? Yep, let's just go with the 29. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll just stick with the 29. I'm glad to see Brad <laughs> back. <laughs> uh, you know what, Chris? Um, this this person probably knows what Fort Trand is, living 12 to 20 miles away from it. You know, she doesn't appear to be evil. She appears to be different. You get a better look at her. She's not an orc, so her skin is green it's for some other reason. She's not. She doesn't have uh, an orcish ancestry to her. She looks to be totally human, and I think there, there, you could say there's a kindness to her. But I also think that you're beginning to reap some of the benefits of being a ruler at a, at a nearby uh, settlement of some import around here. You know, your reputation is good, right? You do good things. And if she knows who you are, she must think you're good and apparently is trusting you based on your reputation. That's what you think. Yeah, though, well, thanks for the invite. Uh, we sure could use a, a bit of rest here. Is it all right if all my companions come in too? Yes, it'll be a little tight in here, but you can come on in. All right, so yeah, I kind of turn back and motion to dry. Uh, it's it's not as complicated as uh, <laughs> as Mitch or Neela's hand gestures, but <laughs> mine are also universal. I kind of trying come to come on in, but yeah, come on over. Just a, it's yeah, a pretty easy one. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and and you know, and I know you detect magic as a as a sort of an exploration activity, and there are magical items in here. There are potions in this hut that, that emanate magic uh, her staff emanates magic and is ruined she's got talismans affixed to her clothing that emanate magic so you're, you're getting the impression that she is somewhat powerful but appears to be friendly is there are we inside <clears throat> or are we can can we see inside so so you walk in you walk uh-huh. across the threshold uh, 76 degrees Fahrenheit in this little hut that's a little toasty oh, heavenly it is the warmest air you've felt in weeks. We should leave uh, Don or um, Gritall outside. Gritall outside. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't want him falling out. <laughs> in the hut, uh, you can see that there is uh, there's a like a, what you what we would think of as like a kitchen table or a dining table. It's got uh, some room for seating. Uh, there's a couple other chairs that are in here that are more for like sitting. There's a small sitting room. A hallway that leads back to what's probably like a bedroom, kitchen area, and a workstation as well. This there's no alchemy supplies, but Mitch, you see evidence that this woman uh, is a rune scribe. Mm. She's a magical crafter. Oh, so kind of while we're all while we're all shuffling in here, um, I kind of m- mentioned. Well, you probably you have a pretty good idea of who we are, um, but uh, we really uh, don't know who you are. So we kind of. Well, let's do some formal introductions. I'm Serio Xavier Stratova. Uh, um, I'm Mitch Groning. Where's Dreykel Mank? Dreykel's standing by the door. He's got his bow slung across his back. He's just going to kind of nod and be like, I'm dry. No last name. You look pretty wet to me. <laughs> so there it is. Oh, How many episodes? In? Took a while. That, yeah, that, that, that took a while. <laughs> took a while. 62. <laughs> to build into that. That's just what about it. our gnome? <laughs> she looks down... At Og, um, almost um, like a mother would look at a child. And who are you? Yeah, and and Og just gives this big goofy smile and <laughs> and just kind of launches in. He's like, "Hey, what's up? I'm Og Jolis and Thompson. Um, I just I just found these guys and they got me this cool kookery. And what's your name again? I think I missed it. And and um, do you have uh, this? This place looks pretty neat. And how are those snowmen work? And he, he he just he, she's gonna have to cut him off or he'll just keep going like oh this. she does and she 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 holds up a hand and she holds up <laughs> in a hand in a way that that gives Og comfort and helps him quiet down in a in a socially nice manner and she says my name is Elga Verniex little one have a seat have a seat all of you sit down I'm happy to help. So is it all right if we rest here for the night? Well, it'll be a little tight, but uh, I have a uh, delicious carrot stew on. You probably smelled it from out the way out there. Now, does that smell from the way the carrots are cut? Or oh, <laughs> I've cut them a really nice way. If you if you rotate the carrot while cutting toward your thumb, it really helps the way it flavors. And also, I use a lot of bouillon. Well, Dry's going to make him so he's going to take his jacket off. Is it on hang it? Is there a is there a hook? Yeah, of course. So we can There's draw all the dry. 
you get hot like pretty quick with mm. everything you're wearing and all the exertion and you are exhausted right and everything you guys get situated um and you you're sitting down some of there's not chairs for everybody some of you are on the floor near the fire you're eating and she sits down in her what has got to be her special chair and uh three or four cats come out of her right. what must be her bedroom you know they were deterred before She's by like, these new people lady. but now they come out it gets a little alarm her in you guys are petting them <laughs> And uh, she's fussing over the cats a little bit. So yeah, kind of through this whole dinner time, calming down, warming up. I'm I'm assuming we're we're talking about stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And I I don't really give her the full download uh, of what we've all been up to like this entire time. Uh, mainly just mentioning the the lizard folk encampment and the the will o wisps. Right. Well, she. So if you bring up <clears throat> the Isle of the Lizard King. She'll tell you that she knows exactly who King Veskit is and will tell you that Veskit is an idiot. <laughs> well, yeah, I can uh, I can concur with that. He was tricked by a will-o'-wisp um, pretty, pretty handily. Oh, from Candlemere Island. Oh. Yeah, we were wondering where the will-o'-wisps came from. We thought they, they may be from there, but w- wasn't sure about this one. It it had the uh, the elite template on it, so I don't know if those <laughs> <laughs> if those are from the island as well or, or where they're from. The will o wisps are attracted to Candlemere Island because of that island's history. Do you know that island's <clears throat> history? Uh, You've been we, there, haven't you? We know that there is some history, but uh, uh, none of us could really recall uh, uh, what kind of history it was. <laughs> the ru- <laughs> a millennia ago, followers of Yog sothoth had a settlement deep below the ground where they attempted over and over to summon the god. Jesus. It would have ended life as it was known. Heroes of Phrasma attacked the island. But realizing that they couldn't fight what was contained below in the deeper reaches, they sealed the stairway going down at the cost of their own lives a thousand years ago. I'm really glad nobody tried to open that. For sure that would have ended poorly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, wow. and I, I well hearing her speak of uh, you know, some of some of that in greater detail, I, I do mention we've seen the seal. You've seen the seal. So the stories were true. It, it must be, and it's still sealed. Leave it. Leave it. If you control these lands, post guards on that island. If they can withstand the, the constant will-o'-wisps, post guards there. Don't let anyone down. There's a, there's a stretcher outside, isn't there? You've lost a companion, haven't you? We've lost many companions since uh, sitting out on this... Uh this expedition um he's he's just the latest well i'm so sorry so yeah sierra is not going to go into details about banging on the the doom <laughs> the doom <laughs> seal or, or whatever um but uh yeah we, we sure. did we did lose him on on the aisle um to to another construct wasn't a snowman construct like you got here um but it, it was it was a construct you know the stolen lands as they're called exist at a place where the first world crosses over with our plane. Look at this little one you've found. He's a result of that as well. As am I. I am uh, what you might call fae touched This gives me my innate abilities. Hmm. I say this only to comfort you, but you should understand that here, souls do not directly go to the boneyard. Here, they are easily diverted to the first world, if people of power want them to be. What I'm trying to tell you is that your friend may not be as gone as you think. No one really dies in the Stolen Lands. Huh. And that's that's just in this area, or is it specific people in this area? It's this area. Mitch thinks this lady is crazy as fuck. Like, this sounds like bullshit. And, so he's uh, going to kind of shake his well, head, roll his eyes. You can't decide if if um, if she's trying to just comfort you all or not. But Mitch, I mean, you can't help maybe. I mean, if this is true, what of your mother? Right. 
which I think, yeah, kind of the depth of why he's just going to shake his head because he's these people are gone. Like, that's it. That's no, there's there's no there's no other place. Hey, our Mike, friend is can, gone. Can uh, Og's got uh, uh, Faylor? Can mm-hmm. he roll that and see if he mm-hmm. knows anything around this area that could disprove or back up this claim? Of course. He rolled a 20. I mean, you definitely think that the um, barrier between the first world and the material plane is thin here. That would explain, you know, why you are, why someone from the first world is so easily able to access you uh, on whims, right? Yeah. You know, you think it's totally reasonable uh, what she's saying. You can't confirm it or disprove it, but, you know, it's possible. Yeah, and Zero can totally see uh, that being a possibility, uh, not only from having uh, done some experiments with uh, substances in the wilderness, <laughs> right. um, but having having a firsthand encounter with uh, with with Fay. Yeah, you summoned the fucking Lantern King. Yeah, definitely you know, possible that's right. <laughs> at one point, which none of us know about. Yeah, so, I haven't right. haven't told uh, haven't yeah. told my buddies. Right. And so this this raises a kind of a question that's kind of brewing as as we're eating dinner. Um, is there, you, you mentioned that they haven't fully gone over, um, that it's not, not really, have they gone to a different plane or is there some kind of like space in between, like a limbo? Can, can we talk? Is there a way to talk to them? She pauses for a long moment. It's possible. You should understand that souls that have traveled there have left their bodies behind here. Maybe you can contact them on the other side, but understand they could never come back. It would depend. Well, that's good to know. Uh, probably won't be holding any seances tonight, but uh, you never know. Rest, King. I'm happy to provide an outpost for you. Yeah, you're, you're being awfully generous. Uh, I, has she made any kind of requests or anything? Or No. Hey Mike, I I don't I don't know if this would make any difference, but I uh, I have a feat called Faith Fellowship, um, where uh, I get a bonus on circumstance to perception and saving throws. But also, uh, whenever I meet a Fey creature in a social situation, in a social situation, you can immediately attempt a diplomacy check to make an impression on that creature, mm-hmm. um, rather than needing to converse for one minute. So I don't know oh, if I trying see. to successfully making an impression would help here with anyway, but. Well, she's um, she's Seems like she's friendly. pretty enamored with us at this point. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I'd even say at this point she's helpful. Like you know, that's okay. one of her you know the conditions are neutral, friendly, helpful, or whatever. Like she's helpful anyway. But I will say that from the get go, you felt that she was especially kind and and perhaps even a bit motherly toward Og. Okay, you both having this Fey um, yep. heritage. Cool. You know, we can talk about this off the air, but she she would be happy to sell formulae to you, Mitchell. Okay. She's a capitalist. She's yeah. not going to give it away. <laughs> um, and she's happy to let you stay the night here. Uh, she'll she'll do that for free. But but yeah, I mean, she's she sees you as as honorable neighbors. Is you there know, anything we could were offer? Her. Respectful to her yes. as you as you came here. You didn't just bust in. Otherwise, she would have fucking tried to kill you with her snowman. But that didn't happen. <laughs> God, with all the loot in here. Have been right. worth it probably. <laughs> it's like a loot pinata. Yeah, there's loot in here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> By the way, Dry is fast asleep on the floor in front of the fireplace. Just oh, in case you guys oh, are... I can't imagine the exhaustion. Yeah. Little guys tuckered out. Well, little guys yeah. had a rough. He's had a rough couple months. Yeah. But but Brad, from a game mechanic standpoint, you know she knows uh, rune formula uh, levels four and down. Okay. So if you want to buy those out of the book. Okay. Like at whatever they're worth in the core rule book. Sure. You can buy those from her off air. Okay. Does she have breakfast ready for us? Yeah. Do we have, yeah. Carrot, do you have got carrot coffee and <laughs> it's, it's, it's all down to, it's all down to how you shred and cut the carrot to what yeah, food yeah, you make out of it. She shreds yeah. the carrots into the, into the pancakes the next morning. Oh and it's, it's good. It's delicious. You guys got a lot of beta carotene. Surprisingly, the one place that we don't find Jello with carrots suspended in it is this lady's house. <laughs> Snowmen are all missing noses. <laughs> oh yeah, she's yeah she eats the noses. Yeah, she's got a carrot farm here. I don't know. Uh, you know that this woman is known as the old Beldame, 
and some people know her and have heard of her and she's kind of mean but not to you guys you guys you guys are we're nice to her so she's nice to you is she a witch she's a little witchy I mean, yeah <laughs> well i'm asking because in tennessee like about 30 miles from my house there's the bell witch cave which is a legit haunted cave we should go next time you guys oh are here. i see <laughs> what was her name again elga or no elga elga e-l-g-a Elga Verniex, Verniex. Or maybe Vernier. I don't know how you'd want to say that, but I mean, we're not French. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. No, we're not. So before before we leave, uh, yeah, Og does. Yeah, he runs up, gives her a big hug. He, he oh, uh, yeah. No, he he Aww. makes uh, he uh, he gains people pretty quick. So you think there's a relationship there? He, that's it's his friend now. And and as we're leaving, I you know thank her for her hospitality. It was. Super awesome because it was really cold and blizzardy, and this was a, kind of a great, uh, great way to rest up. Um, and I, I let her know if she needs anything, um, absolutely anything. Uh, just send send word or uh, some. I'm sure you have ways of uh, uh, getting in touch. Sure. She extends a, a uh, wrinkly green, long nailed hand to you to shake your hand. Yeah, we'll shake on it. Would okay. she accept any coins for kind of? Her hospitality. She nods. Okay. She would. I give her three would. copper. Three oh, copper. She, she's like. <laughs> Throw a gold. Kidding. Oh, thank Throw you. A gold <laughs> slice. Throw I'll give a her a gold. gold piece for every person that was housed. Yeah. And oh, now we have to roll yeah. for initiative because we can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a um, so slight of three copper. Teller. Brad, were you just trying to like make the columns even by getting <laughs> yes. <rid of> that <laughs> copper? You're trying to get my least change out of my pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So having, befri- having befriended Elga, um, you can now establish a settlement here, and you'd get a free herbalist hut. Ooh. Wow. We need to work like on that. our first establishment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, did we ask the herbalist if <gasps> oh, that's right. she had any, I don't know, uh, Og wouldn't Wolf, know to ask this, but if there's any wolf's bane. Uh-huh. How do you how do you ask well, that without giving it away though? I like, think deceptively, hey, uh, like you ask, oh, what kind of uh, you know rare herbs do you have around? <laughs> yeah, I know she, somebody she doesn't have it. it. She doesn't have wolf spain. You know, the book says that she qualifies as an herbalist hut, but the truth is, she, I, I don't see her as an herbalist herbalism? so much as I see her okay. as a magic crafter. Okay, um, right. she's got some herbalism knowledge, but like I would say that she's she's not like Boken, right? Like she mm-hmm. can she can make some level one items, I suppose. Um, but if you, yeah, she doesn't know, you take a look and you're like, she doesn't have wolf's mane. Like, no way. Yeah. Like, right. I don't even think you would need to ask her if you're concerned about giving it away or She's not. just got that look on her face that says she knows nothing about wolf's mane, even though it's, it's not like, been in the topic at all. <laughs> well, I, think, I think it's I like think, walking well, into a Denny's enough. and expecting to see oysters. You know, it's just, you're, you're not fair. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm yeah sure that's, I guess. Yeah. I'm sure as Serio's there, he's looking around and he's like, well, yeah, I don't, you know, she's got oregano and carrots. Right. Nothing's going on yeah, here. She's got a lot of carrots. <laughs> she's got a lot of oregano. Yeah. Yeah, Tassim tried Fellas. to sell me oregano. That never mind. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right. So you, you step out in the morning. You um the snow stopped. Okay. Nice. It stopped last night. And the sky is totally clear and like light blue. Um, it is so cold. Okay, it's it is five below zero oh, right Jesus. now. There's no there's no wind at all, and it is so silent outside. Unbelievably quiet. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, you look to the northeast toward Fort Trand. You know how to get there. It's going to come down to weather in this greater difficult terrain. You can make it in time. And I have no, I, I talk to me about how you think we ought to resolve this. You know, I don't know that it really is a survival check because, you know, you, you guys know where to go. Well, but then again, maybe you would get lost. I mean, you haven't really reconnoitered this hex. So maybe there is a survival component to this. Or maybe it's an athletics check. How Just, should we do this? What's the normal travel rate through a hex? Isn't it one day per hex? It is, yeah, so it's one travel activity to move from one hex to another. You have horses, which normally mean you can take two travel activities a day, but because of the snow, their their speed bonus is useless. We're dragging now, a litter, to me, and we have more people than we have horses, too. So, yeah. That. So it seemed to me that probably 
I mean, if, if, if we considered this a forest hex on foot, it would take you two travel activities to travel through it, which would mean that like you're per se, you're, you're no matter what you're hosed right now, unless you do a forced march. But I'm, I'm wondering if this isn't just a 50, 50, like a 50, 50, either you make it to trend or the sun's starting to set and you're still caught out in the middle and you're like, fuck, should we just do it that way? You just want to do a straight, what are we rolling? Just straight die? coin flip i just think it might be a coin flip i just think with the snow the way it is and with the with the ground the fact that you haven't reconnoitered the hex um but my understanding from my understanding of the rules that's a better deal than the rules would give us (laughs) honestly like a 50 (laughs) because right now like as it is like we'd have to do a forced march and maybe make it i don't even think a forced march would as the rules are written how many people get get a flip you're gonna take the coin flip. How yeah, I think people, it's a guess. How many people get the flip? Sure. Is the question. Just one. Oh, it's just one um, coin. One. One. It's 50, just one 50. coin. Yeah. Mike's gonna roll. I, I will tell you what. I have the. I have. I. I know whether heads or tails gets you to Fort Trand in my mind right now. I just need someone to flip a coin right, a and tell coin. me what you get. Maybe got a coin. I mean, I have a. Yeah, I got the coin. Yes, yeah, the coin. I was. I was setting Chris up for that. I'm sorry. Oh, Chris. Yes. Can, Chris has the coin too. I think this is this is Chris's. Uh, Chris is the king. Flip it. Yeah. All right, we got a, a 1905 a Liberty head nickel. There it is. Ooh. The Liberty yeah. is the head, and the V on the back for five is the tails. Here it goes. Oh, they never land table. on the desk. <laughs> Crack coin. It is tails. Tails. Fuck, Mike's stretching. He's stretching. He's <laughs> doing the whole like cracking his knuckles thing. <laughs> He's never been happier, folks. <laughs> you make it. Oh, yes. Oh. You make it. It's close, but you make it. Fort Trand. Okay? You're back. It's been a while. Okay? You get here. Valerie, probably Valerie, has been in charge. You think, is, is that is that fair to say? She's kind of been running the day-to-day, your general? As far as our standby leaders, Valerie, Harim, and Amiri, probably Valerie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably Valerie. Yeah. I feel as though she could be bossy, though. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. I little, just want whoever's going to have like a trippy. nice warm hearth for us to like come and like pass out at. You know, like well, whoever's going to set that up. That's the king's right quarters well. should be. Right. Yeah. So so you get into town, and you can see that some snow clearing has occurred, and things are looking okay. Doesn't look like anything has really happened in the last three and a half weeks, and you. Um, you you know that this is this was there when you left. There's kind of a makeshift town square that's near the the town hall that you guys all live in together. And you you get there and you notice that there's a crowd of about fifty to sixty people mm-hmm. gathered in the town square. And you're getting closer and you hear that there's not really a lot of crowd noise, but there are some cheers from time to time. And you see that there is a man up on a stage that he's kind of made for himself. And he's talking. And he's, he's kind of uh, giving, a, giving a monologue. And as you get a little closer, um, he's, he's ripping on you guys to your citizens. And you don't recognize him, by the way. He just looks, he just looks like a man. He's kind of in color, colorful clothing. But he's going, they live in this Beautiful town hall, you guys are left in squalor. Homes not even built for you when you got here. They go out, they kill, they do whatever they need to do. They leave you all hanging. They know you're going to be here for them when they get back. Well, they're not back, are they? They're not back at all. God, can I notch an arrow and just shoot it right at him? Yeah, what's the range (laughs) on your bow? (laughs) 100. 100. I was picturing that scene from Game of the Thrones where the dude's like making fun of the queen and then the mountain like finds him in an alley while he's pissing and just crushes his head. I think Og Og looks back over at the guys and he's like, these guys sound like assholes. Who are they talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Especially because we have Kritala's body with us. I'm not going to put up with this. As you get closer, he continues. And what of Kundal? He was killed without any process. Any, any, any at all. We know they seek Wolfsbane. What do they need it for? What are they not telling us? 
What are they not telling us? Why do the leaders disappear on full moons? Why? It's only Why? Been one. They're it's harboring so someone. They're harboring someone. We know it to be true. And what of those women they killed in that barn nearby? Why did they do that? They don't tell us anything. There's no consistency between the way that we're all treated. They're neglectful. They travel all the time. It is not them that should be leading us. It's her. And who he points to is Octavia, who you met, you know, you rescued her from those slavers. And she's standing there with Ragonger, her her partner. And Octavia is like kind of not okay with the attention. (laughs) But you might remember that Octavia was the one that that brought Kundal's victims to see you guys that day Mm -hmm. and that she was kind of comforting them and. She's like, uh, he's like, you should elect her to represent you, to lead you. She should be in charge, not these jokers. And and then you guys come down and he's like, and lo, there they are now. There they are. Boo. As you guys get back. That's Is he the happens. only one booing? How many of the crowd, how much of the crowd is booing? Some of the crowds, people are booing. Like how many? Man, they're going to have to sleep like, outside the fort like, train uh, tonight. See how like that you works. Think, you think about half the crowd. Are they I like recognizable? How, I like how that guy said elect. <laughs> what is this? El- what is this? What is this election? elect thing that he keeps saying? Uh, you guys know that um, you hear from the crowd. Uh, this dude's name is Grigori. I got a little art for you for this guy. Here he is. He's a he's he's a gifted orator, and he is oh, using his big. powers right now. If there were ever a punchable face, that is a punchable (laughs) face right there. Oh, yes, he is. He's got a cool little goatee, kind of looks a little pudgy, a little overweight. He's got kind of the the bangs curling down, the hair coming down. He's got that, he's got the haircut that Anton Schwer has. Yeah, uh, he does. The Farquaad. Yeah, and he's got like, he's he's wearing like nice stuff. Like he's nicely dressed. And he's fucking taking you guys down right now. So, while while we're, while we're riding up, like we we can hear everything he says, right? Like he's we, totally, I, like totally. Dry can hear him booing and pointing at us. Yeah. Well, Dry's gonna slide off his horses and draw his sword and start walking to the stage. And look, here he comes! Here he comes! Look, he's gonna hurt me because yes. I'm speaking out against him. Everybody, <laughs> look how they rule! Look. Are there skill checks we can roll to learn anything about this guy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone wanted a society check, right? What's yeah, his AC? Done. Twenty-seven. Society. Twenty-seven. Ooh. Um, he's not from around here. You you maybe saw him once or twice before you left. I mean, he's one of your citizens for sure. Nice. He's he's a transplant. You're not sure from where, but yeah, you don't know. He uh, you know from like a from like a heritage standpoint. You know, he looks like he was born around here. Like he's <laughs> not from another part of the world. Um, but uh, but yeah. So dry. You're approaching with your sword out, and the citizens they all turn to you and they're like, "Whoa, boo! Why he's just talking? What's the problem?" Boo, boo. I'm going to call bullshit on this. Yeah, and Sirio kind of, you know, d- doesn't, you know, grab dry, but just kind of holds his hand out, kind of, you know, l- lower the sword or, or, or sheath it. Um, we can, we can, we can talk it out. What, from what we heard, this guy's speaking mostly nonsense. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to sheath my sword, but I'm not going to leave Sirio's side. Oh, good. Yes, they've made the right decision. They've chosen peace this day. Uh, see, now he's going to get shot again. Now I'm going to stab him again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was your name? Oh, you ask him, what's yeah. your name? Yeah, who the, who the hell are you? Grigori. Oh, Interesting, good Viceroy. Been... Built any roads lately? I haven't seen you working on any of the projects around town, so I didn't recognize you. I'm engaged in the work of advocacy. I help people understand the situation that they're in. That is my calling. What How is much yours? food does that put on the table, sir? Well, you see, they now throw their barbs against me. You see how weak-minded they are, everybody. So Og, Og gets up there and and uh, he kind of starts going in. And he's like, he's like, I just, I just met these guys. He's like, and they helped me out a lot. So he's like, I don't know what. The, and can he tell? Like, is this a like? Is this a is this a gnome? Is this a human? Is this what? What is he's this human? He's human. He's, human. he's like I don't. I, I don't know what this 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 human's talking about. Um, these these guys have been super helpful to me the the, the whole time I've known them. They've, they've been super polite. Um, and and uh, can I tell like is he a like is he a wizard? Is he can I tell like he's a great orator? So I, I assume that's part of his class. But you can know, I tell it, what he, he is? doesn't doesn't look like he's got any like class levels or anything. No I mean, class he's levels. A, okay. He's just a 
He's he's a oh, so he has guy. low <laughs> HP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and and just kind of you know tries to win the crowd back over and 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 say they this 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 guy's crazy and and then he just kind of addresses this guy. He's like, why why are you so upset with these guys? What what did they what did they do? It seems like you got ulterior motives. And um, it's like I I just you just seem dishonest to me. And I've never seen you before, gnome. Did they find you somewhere out there on one of their expeditions? And he does the hand quotes and stuff. <laughs> I want to fucking kill this guy. And uh, he's he's like, um, give yeah, them no, a little he... time. They'll show their true colors to you as they have to all of us. Um, but but make the um, make the diplomacy check to try to win the crowd. Okay. A little bit with what you're saying. Um, and before I do that, um, I've got a, a thing here called Phase Fortune. And once per day, uh, I'm going to attempt a skill check, and I haven't rolled. Uh, the effect is I get to roll the skill check twice and use the better result. Okay. So I'm going to try to win the crowd over here. Wow, you're going to do nice that for job. us. I appreciate yep. that. Oh, you're uh, so you're the smiling. first one's a four, so Dude, hopefully the second not... one's better. I'm calling it now. It's a two. Uh, natural 13. Yes. Ooh. What was I doing? A what check? Diplomacy. Diplo. Diplomacy. Oh, so it'll be a total of 20. I will say that uh, some of the crowd does react well you know you're kind of speaking rationally finally right i mean this guy is engaging in obviously uh propaganda uh dis- destructive political speech trying to tear down your your rule and your authority um and uh og does make an effort to try to bring the crowd back down a little bit it's helpful but i mean th- this this rally so called is still ongoing but it's it's wrapping up and uh, you know, Grigori um, bows down, and you know, and 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 you get the impression that he's kind of been doing this while you've been gone. Like this is not the first one, and uh, and he he bows down to the people, and he says, "I'll be here next week. You know my time. You know my place. Everybody, peace." And he, he <laughs> sounds sounds off. good, Gregory. I mean, you it's it's <laughs> that's it's Gregory. Well, it's, it's... Inattention to detail. Do you see everybody? <laughs> I mean that that's that's all right. You know, I, at least we're the same height. Um, oh. But uh, it's 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 good to know where where you'll be next week because I'll I'll be here as well because it's 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 one thing to kind of spout off without uh, being able to uh, have any rebuttals, um, but. When when counters are made, um, the the people will see uh, what's really going on. Yeah, and and the people are like a debate, a debate. He'll debate him. To Gregory, he'll have to debate, right? So there's a little bit of bustle. Going Mitch on. is going to kind of uh, lean in towards Dry and be like, "Let's have a uh, talk with Jathel. You think we can solve this?" <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and yeah, I told you grabs, we got a week. I, I told you we could kind of charge. Pull, pulls stereo sleeve, so he kind of leans down and he's like. I, I can go murder him if you want. Just, just tell me. <laughs> and he gives that big, that big, that big toothy smile. Dry, Dry's gonna look at you Valerie. Get, I'll make him dead. Dry's gonna look at Valerie like, "What the fuck have you been doing yeah. this whole time?" Nice work, <laughs> Valerie. <Yeah. laughs> right. Like she should have yeah, been on so that you stage. You get back to the town us. hall. Valerie's there, uh, and Valerie will explain to you that she, it was extremely hard for her to prevent Jathel and Amiri from killing Gregory. <laughs> I bet. Week after week. Um, but that if you were to harm Gregory for the words that he's saying, it would spread unrest throughout the community. Is her read on this. And that you have would to, it? that that you've got to meet him on his terms uh, and, and, and squelch this through diplomacy rather than through force. Uh, force is an option. You could easily kill him. Um, but that again, it would it would uh, from a game mechanic standpoint, you'd get unrest and mm-hmm. ruin, like in the in this in, you know. <laughs> and Valerie's like, uh, well, first of all, I mean, we we we've, we're dispensing with a lot of the stuff you might really have started talking about, which is of course, you know, the loss of Kritala and all of that stuff. So, I assume you fill her in and everything and. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm glad we could minimize that. That's good. Right. I know, right? <laughs> really, yeah, it's really horrible. made the sacrifice. Well, that, to that's why Dry's reaction it. was so angry. It was because he's carrying <laughs> yeah. a dead party a member, fallen, and this dude's right, talking here. shit. A crowd right. favorite, by the way. Like, yeah, crowd yeah, crowd was like, yeah, known like baby, by the yeah, like the true. Well, and let's remember, you guys are out securing the borders. Right. Like you, you're Put doing, you're right. You're doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's don't don't let me 
tilt you guys. Grigori's fucking wrong. But oh, well, it's like you should have just let me kill him. Mike has a sticky note that says constitutional crisis that he's going to thrust <laughs> upon us if we Every kill a political day. dissident. So right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we'll make him um, do that. You know, uh, my assumption is you're probably getting prepared for tonight as well. I, you know, well, again, y- the exhaustion y- of the party, uh, I can't ooh. imagine. Could we, we don't, suggest um, that? Could we set up a, a meeting between Grigori and Sirio for tonight, let's say, right <laughs> after the, <laughs> the midnight? Yeah. I'll let you guys continue figuring out this week how you're going to deal with this Grigori situation. we got to talk about how you're going to lay Kritala to rest. We've got a lot to do.